On the one hand, there is WHO staff, the doctors, the scientists, the researchers, among many others. They focus on technical and operational public health work. On the other hand, there are the countries, that is the member states. The member states decide on the political issues like membership, like observership, and they, these 194 member states of the World Health Organization, they set the policies of the organization. And in that connection, the policies of the organization, it's important to understand that WHO is very much part of the United Nations. In 1971, the countries of the United Nations decided to recognize the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate representative of China. One year later, in 1972, the member states of the World Health Organization decided in Resolution 25.1 to do the same thing. And this has been the official position of the United Nations since 1971. WHO is the specialized health agency of the United Nations and as such aligns with the United Nations and must do so coherently. So we are in the hands of countries on these issues. WHO staff doesn't have the mandate or power to change that. Our mandate is to work to promote the health of all people everywhere. We do this, again, as described by the DG, without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. This is part of the DNA of the organization. It is literally written into the opening paragraphs of the WHO Constitution. This means we work with and for all people everywhere, whether they are in Taiwan, China, or any other place. So I'd like to provide some examples of the well-established arrangements for Taiwan's health experts working with WHO. I'd like first to give five examples of activities in the context of the COVID-19 response, and then five more examples of activities in a wider context. So 10, 10 in all, but I will keep this concise. So in the context of the pandemic, first, for the international health regulations, the IHR, Taiwan has a formal point of contact, a focal point. The IHR is the international treaty which guides and regulates the global health response. Taiwan's IHR point of contact receives communications and provides information directly to WHO headquarters. It also has full access to the IHR event information site system, and in a recent development, all IHR contact points have access through that system to the weekly information sessions from headquarters. Second, their health experts participate in two key WHO networks set up in January to support WHO's work in the global response. Three of their experts are part of WHO's IPC network, the Infection Prevention and Control Network. Two of their experts are part of WHO's Clinical Management Network. And every week, they join a WHO teleconference, sometimes twice a week, with scores of other experts from around the globe working to advance our knowledge and our guidance in the response. Third, two of Taiwan's health experts participated in the WHO Global Research and Innovation Forum that was organized in mid-February with scientists participating from around the world. Fourth, WHO has briefed and discussed their response with their health authorities in Taipei Dr. Van Kerkhove and I spoke with them by phone in February and again earlier today, and work is underway to do so again, and Dr. Van Kerkhove may want to comment on that uh, in a moment. Fifth, WHO also interacts with their health authorities through the European Centers for Disease Prevention and Control. So those are some examples related to the pandemic. There are five additional examples I'd like to share with you on a range of other health-related issues. First, over the course of last year, 2019, Taiwan's experts attended eight WHO expert meetings, more than one every other month. The issues they worked on included immunization, drug-resistant TB, vaccine safety, non-communicable diseases, and mental health. And work is underway for more of this kind of expert participation in 2020 as well. 
Second, on influenza, a Taiwanese vaccine manufacturer, Adimmune Corporation, contributes to the WHO pandemic influenza preparedness framework. The PIP framework is a critical access and benefit sharing framework for pandemic flu. Third, in the fight against cancer, their experts have contributed articles published in WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer publications. Specifically, their articles have appeared in the authoritative WHO IARC Blue Book on classification of tumors. Fourth, in support of the IHR mechanisms ongoing, one of their leading public health experts is included in the prestigious IHR experts roster. And fifth, on issues from pharmaceutical manufacturing to malaria, we have exchanges on practical and technical issues. So those are 10 examples that underscores the principle that WHO works with all people everywhere. I'd like to add that this work contributes to WHO, to the response, and to WHO's work in many areas of global public health.